Hello everyone, we are Scheduler. Uh, we are delivering your lists with less labour. Um, what we are trying to fix is the inefficiency within theatre scheduling. Um, so it was Dr George's fabulous idea. He is an anaesthetist in the NHS and I'm going to let him tell you why it's important for him for us to solve this issue. Um, so surgical lists are quite, well, have the capacity to be really inefficient. There's lots of people involved, there's lots of resources. And so it's expensive when you start wasting time. And more, most importantly, patients don't get their operations, or patients get delayed or cancelled. Um, so we're trying to make a list solution that is more efficient and keeps everyone in the loop. And I'm sure we can all agree it's a much needed solution. Um, so what we'll do is we'll run through the problem very quickly, uh, and then a bit of background um, from these wonderful doctors who have the frontline experience. I am not one of them. Um, and then we'll go into our solution proposal and we can show you a live demo of our MVP. So the problem that we're trying to solve is that theatre scheduling is inefficient uh, and we see that it's negatively impacted by often foreseeable and preventable issues. So uh, I'm going to hand over to Zal and he's going to talk us through how we've thought about this in the perioperative patient journey. So there are quite a few different problems we have in the perioperative journey and there's an NHS report called Getting It Right First Time Show the next slide, please. Uh, which highlights three, or three of the issues that we think we can solve. Uh, some of the issues on the admission process, the surgery itself and the post-operative period. And we can kind of overcome some of these challenges using schedule that we can make for a much more efficient um, patient experience with a much better use of resources. So it's very important to, con to consider the different stakeholders. So patients specifically, this whole process and the whole idea behind this is that we improve their experience, whether that's by reducing anxiety or reducing my physical pain from their ill by mouth time. Staff, this reduces frustration. I'm sure all the doctors in the room have seen the issues with scheduling, standing around for hours, doing nothing. So we want to eliminate that and save time and money. And then the system overall, it just improves the overall flow throughout the hospital. And we've had a look, and with George, we worked deep. Uh, we went into depth with the stakeholders that are actually involved on the day. So pre-op, then we actually brief in the morning before theatre, then the patients' movements from their ward down to theatre, and then back out again to make sure everyone is fully informed along the way, and that there's no delay. Um, so our idea is basically a system where you can submit cases, and it has live updating, and can reorganise your cases and know what's going on and also has the capability to notify kind of the relevant members of staff. So for instance, if you know you're getting towards the end of a case, then they can notify the ward nurse who's looking after the patient, uh, the next patient, that they need to start getting ready. And then that kind of helps you um, shorten the amount of time you're doing those turnarounds. And we mocked up this web solution that works um, reasonably well for the time being, and that can notify kind of what equipment you need, roughly how long your um, procedure is going to be, and the idea is that over time you'd be able to learn how long each procedure for each surgeon in given circumstances takes, and so you can improve the estimated um, procedure lengths with time and kind of reschedule that way. Um, and we've just got some demos there, and ideally it all links through to your phone and to anyone's phone so they can subscribe to updates, updates for a given theatre. And so, for instance, if they need to know that they need to get, start getting ready for the next case, then they're able to do that. And as well, there's equipment warnings. So in the yellow boxes, which we'll show you later, each case has a set number of bits of equipment that they need, and you'd compare that with your inventory management system, and so you'd alert them that actually, oh no, we're going to run out of the laparoscopic kits, we need to get one clean now because we've got this case in the office that needs one. Um, and then, so this is the live version that's running at the moment, so if you, you can all go to that URL in the top left, that's running, you can have a look at it. Um, and the idea is that effectively you've got your, we can see our case list at the moment, we go through here. So these are the cases that we've already cracked on this morning, so it's actually been quite an efficient morning, good for us, we've already got through. Oh look, there's an appendix going on. Um, but I've just been beat by the surgical registrar on call saying that they've actually got a laparostomy that we need to do, um, so we should probably go and book that now, if I can spell, which is not good. And it's going to be a long one, so it's going to be lots of hours. We can submit that through, and then that's going to schedule it on our list for us, when it loads. This is your Blue Peter example. It is, yeah. Here's my cardboard tube version that I made. <laughs> and so if we go down to the bottom, oh look, it's already it's booked in our lap of me, and we can see that it's up, updated onto our calendar at the bottom, but oh no, we're going to overrun past six o'clock to put it in bed. And the idea is we've notified the PID coordinator so they can start managing 
um, around that. And if I look at my phone calendar, it's already stuck up on there and updated based on what there has happened there. And I can say, actually, I'm going to delete one of those cases to try and make room. And then I'm going to rerun the allocations. And then And made room for us. Okay, done. And you can see the cases have changed. Sorted. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank that's all. That's all. Right. Uh, judges, panel members, do you have any questions at all? Yeah. I mean, so at the moment, things like um, in most apartments, well, most ones I've worked in, speak, so, okay. um, most ones that, are, that will have things like a binder or some information about, okay, so Mr. X requires this set, these sets for his appendixes, and a different set requires a different set. And so if you know that in advance, then you can plan your days a little bit better around that. And over time, things like learning how long cases actually take, because I think any one of us who's worked in theatres saying, oh yeah, it's a quick case, it's only going to be 30 minutes, knows that there's always a bit of a pinch of salt involved with that. And it's those things that lead to things like lists being overbooked, and that leads to patients being cancelled on the day, which is probably what we're trying to avoid. Um, and as well, equipment availability. So if you find out halfway through a list that you don't have enough kit to do the remaining three cases, then that's an afternoon of theatre time, and potentially you know, 10, 10 staff members that have had their time wasted. <coughs> Any other questions? Any other questions? Yeah, I have any questions from the audience? From the audience? Yes. I'll let you with the mic. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, can I just ask, who, who puts the data in? Um, the surgeons or the, um, the assistant of the surgeons? And aren't the surgeons with gloves all the time and make sure that they... How is this working in practice? I mean, so, so at the moment, for instance, if I'm booking, so in my hostel we're using Epic, and in Epic uh, we have a form that submits a case to the emergency theatre list that we type in. So that is usually one of the search price trials that's in charge of that case would do that, so probably this would be an equivalent to them. In our toy demo, it's just through this website, but realistically, if you were doing this, implementing it in reality, you try to implement it to talk to your um, electronic health records so it could drag that information across automatically, if that's what you probably do. And then, for instance, in theatre, we're already input updates based on things like night to skin, closure, all that sort of stuff. And so you can use that information. So you could use the closure event to trigger when the nurses need to get the next patient ready to come through. So you could do it automatically. This is a manual version. Well, not that. The one we've shown. Great. Yeah? Just, just quickly, I guess in future iterations, could you pool capacity amongst all of the theatres in a hospital, but then different hospital sites too, and so you could actually send patients yeah. to another theatre? So potentially, so I know some hospitals that are sort of in the centre, so things like Chatham and Gloucester do do that to some extent, as in they can share resources across sites, so we're all part of the same hospital, hospital complex-ish. Um, but yeah, that's the thing. R1 just shows one theatre in a hospital, just to, as a simple version, but yeah, ideally sharing, and so that things like equipment being used in other theatres, you need to make sure that that it's not going to cross over the availability that you need in your theatre. So yeah, you get you link it all together. I think thinking about uh, vertical diversification as well. Um, so one of the guys in our team who's not here today, Shakir, he had a similar idea to George, which was around uh, scheduling. Uh, so he's a, a radio, not radiographer. Yeah, radio, radiographer. Radiographer. Um, he's a radiographer, and um, he was saying that a lot of his he has a lot of dead hours in the day because those any cancelled uh, slots aren't filled and it's all done by phone and that manual element can be removed. So I think this is a kind of copy and paste but adapt slightly in the code or wherever it might be, the data input, uh, for different departments as well. But I think the idea around whether it's uh, hospital specific or trust specific or you know local area specific is, is part of the expansion that we would see. Thank you very much. All right, next team.